Hambini fans, and welcome to another episode of Hambini is Impressed for once. These are the Nine Velo CD Wide Series wheels. They're extremely popular amongst my Patreon subscribers, and these are the wheels I personally race on. They are about $1,200 delivered to your door, including taxes, or around $900 without, and again, it depends on where you are in the world. Now, Nine Velo is not a brand that's kind of like in your face. It's not that flashy, and their website is probably not that polished, but without doubt, these are the best engineered wheels that I've ridden and that you can probably get. Let's start off with some headline specs. Firstly, they are hooked. I'm not a fan of hookless. Um, you can run them tubeless, but I've got TPU inner tubes in there. The front is a 58 millimeter depth and the rear is a 65 millimeter depth. Um, you can get uh, different sizes. For comparative purposes, you know, 50-50, which is kind of like the, the standard size, is about 1200 grams just over in, uh, in weight. This isn't the, the rim that is on that bike, but this is used for illustrative purposes. The external, which is measured between the outside of these two flanges is 30 millimeters. The internal, which is measured on the inside of these two flanges is 24. The nine Velo wheel has local spoke reinforcement. So where there's a spoke, they locally reinforce the section where the nipple goes through, hence it's thick here. Where there's no nipple, it goes back to this thin section. Now on the cheaper wheels, the heavier wheels, they tend to have that thickness all the way through and it tends to make the rim a bit heavier. On the really, really cheap wheels, there's no reinforcement. So you've got that sort of section all the way through. Big strength of the Nine Velo wheels are the transition between the tire and the rim. These tires are fairly new. Moving further down, you then gain, come to the exposed nipple. So there's about five millimeters exposed. So maintenance is relatively easy. The spokes, I think these are Stren. Um, they're 4.85 millimeters uh, cord length and then about 0.9 millimeters in thickness. A lot of wheels are radially laced on one side and cross laced on the other. One side has to be cross laced on a uh, disc wheel or a rear wheel. On this wheel, they're cross-laced on both sides, so the wheel becomes stiffer. The front wheel is also cross-laced on both sides. A lot of things in wheel sets are plainly obvious and visible, but quite a considerable amount of engineering is invisible, and it's only there when someone tells you about it. One of the big differences with these hubs are the bearings. So this is a normal-ish bearing that you see on quite a lot of DT hubs and you know hubs from sort of generic manufacturers like Hunt. And this is one from this Nine Bellow. So they're the same bore size and the same outer, but check out the thickness difference. Now these are both Toyama bearings, they make them for all the sizes. This one, which is um, almost 30% you know, bigger than this one, has four times the stiffness. So that translates to a much better ride. And if you don't use the full stiffness, it will generally last longer. If you multiply that stiffness over you know, four bearings, two on each wheel, that's a considerable difference. Again, another subtle difference. These two hubs may look very similar, apart from their color, but there's some geometrical differences in here. And again, it'll be some of those things that people aren't aware of when they go to buy wheels. So the dimension from one side to the other, which I think is commonly called the OLD, is the same. The position of the disc brake is the same, and the position of the free hub is the same. However, if you look here at this flange and this flange, so they're the non-drive flanges, this one sits about four millimeters lower than this one. So this one has a wider bearing separation. So the distance between that, which is a fixed point, and that is wider than this one. 
that results in a stiffer wheel. Now, on by itself, probably doesn't add up to much, but we've got a load of features of these wheels which incrementally add up and then you get the full performance gain. To explain what happens, if we draw a tyre like that and then the rim comes down like that and then we have bearing spacing like that. That is how, let's say, one is made and then on an inferior item that spoke might end up here. So you've got this adverse angle here versus here. So this one with the solid line will generally be stiffer. The only way to really compensate with having a shallower spoke angle is by increasing the tension. If all other things are kept the same, then the lateral stiffness in theory and generally in practice of the wider stance setup is superior. This is the test certificate for this wheel, so it is a, effectively a controlled document. Um, the hubs are exceptional. Uh, they've got zero run out, absolutely nothing. And then all of these things down here, which are the vibration and the fits, again, are best in class. Um, they were the same on the previous generation of Nine Velo hubs as well. One of the killer features on this, without doubt, is the introduction of a titanium free hub. This cassette has Reynolds Hydro Service um, coating on it, so I don't whack, well, I don't wax it, I use squirt on it, but nothing really sticks to it. I mean, it's had loads of use on it, nothing sticks. I'll take this off, I've already loosened it. This is the titanium free hub. There's not a mark on it. Absolutely nothing, totally spotless. It's just like the day it went in. And this has had well over 1,500, 2,000 kilometers on there. Absolutely nothing. I'm gonna use this hub as an example because it's of a similar design. The hub has a 45 tooth ratchet. Um, the odd number is preferential from a vibration perspective because you're going to get less chance of a harmonic. This uh, is a ratchet system so you can undo that, pull that off and that's how it is set up inside. So this is very similar to what DT had uh, not that long ago but the patent ran out. There are some subtle differences, obviously the bigger bearings that I've spoken about but also with a normal DT hub, you need a special tool to get the bearings out. On this one, you don't. You can just use a normal press and then fish the bearings out. Again, this has been pretty much faultless. The one on the bike, obviously I've got this one, so it's just easier to show you. Hello! Oh, fuck's sake. Right, it's that time of the show again. It is time for PowerPoint, so let's check that pen is working pen is working. You can hook me up on all of these places on the interweb on my socials. So there's Hambini Eng on Instagram, Hambini Eng on Facebook and Patreon forward slash Hambini and obviously the Hambini website. Nine Velo CD wide series and engineering masterclass and that is genuinely what this is because it is at the time I'm making this video the best. Bye Hambini age five. Right, let's show you the Nine Velo website. So this is the Nine Velo website. You can have a look at it for yourselves. Um, and this is the wheels you can get. Now, if you have any queries, then email them and they are pretty good. So I think it's Ruth or Cindy will get back to you. Ruth does have an FTP of 300 and I did see her at Euro bike and there was a video of her going up a hill and she made everyone else look like they were pedestrians and she just looked like she was going up on a scooter or something. It was incredible. Um, I'll get on to what you should buy later on, but personally I would get the the wider, sorry, the deeper rear wheel and um, not worry so much about the front. I know there is a tendency to go towards this reverse mullet, but I don't agree with it. Um, and yeah, you can talk about it later on in the video. 
The ratchets are available in 36 tooth and 45 tooth um, and the titanium free hub is in my opinion worth getting and this includes all the taxes so that is the price you'll pay. Right, this is the test set for the wheel. I mean, there's a few standout features from this. First of all, the spoke tension deviation is really, really small. Um, there's not a lot in there at all. Uh, and the other thing is the, I mean, the run outs are just like zero everywhere. It was just really, you know, top, top dollar. They were the best. Um, and the critical speed is extremely high compared to other wheels. I think that's mainly because uh, it's cross-laced um, and then yeah, if you go down a bit further I mean the hubs really are a work of art I mean if you look at the uh, ball pass frequency out of ball pass frequency you know all these ball spin frequency and fundamental train frequency I mean they're all so low it's just best in class I can't really say much more than that I mean this over here the run outs they're just zero just zero everywhere um, now, if I was to compare that to another wheel, let's say, uh, what would we go for? Uh, if we compare the 9 Velo wheel and a decent wheel, which I guess is the Nipes Nova or the Nipes Maui, um, which is, is pretty good. The, I mean, you can see here versus here. It's a bit higher. I mean, you'd say that was good, okay? Just to be clear, that is quite good. But this, all of these are just exceptional. The, the, you know, me measuring them, I'm getting zeros. They're obviously doing them to a higher degree because I'm measuring to like 0 0.01 of a millimeter, whereas it looks like they're going to like single digit microns. So I can't really say much more than that. Now, I mentioned this earlier on in the show, but the optimal setup is probably not the reverse mullet. So those not familiar with it, the reverse mullet is, if this is the bike, there's the back wheel and there's the front wheel. This one is deeper than the back wheel, which is shallower. Okay, um, I'm just gonna rub that out. Now, if you're gonna get a deeper wheel, one of the trade-offs is, and I think it's really the only trade-off, is it's gonna weigh more because the rim weighs more, or carbon weighs more than air. So where there would be air, if you had a shallower wheel because there's a spoke surrounded by air, uh, you've then got carbon, which weighs significantly more. However, if you go to a shallower wheel, you've got more spoke length. So there is a higher tip velocity. So the extra 15 or 20 mil, depending on how deep you make the spokes, uh, has a high velocity. And the, I hate using maths, but it's V equals omega R. V is velocity, omega is angular speed. So read that as RPM, or you could even use that as ground speed. And then R is the, um, the radius. Uh, and then yeah, to even add some more maths to it, uh, the power required is power equals, it's the cube of the, um, the speed. <laughs> so um, it's proportional to V cubed. So a small increase in um, the, the tip velocity has quite a big increase in the power and then you get that from the longer spoke. Now the other thing is because the spoke is longer there is a larger wetted area. Now if you're not interested in all of the maths and to be honest I wouldn't be, think of it as an egg whisk. So this is your egg whisk over here yeah, um, which is a smaller diameter than the bigger egg whisk. So a bigger egg whisk causes more turbulence even if the flow inside the, the container is whisking around, going around it's worse if the egg whisk is bigger. So there we go. Now, one thing that's a bit more subjective is the handling. Now, I'm of the opinion, if you can handle like a 50, 50 millimeter wheel at the front, you should be all right with a 50 millimeter wheel at the back. If you go 
to uh, a wheel combination where you can't handle that, then it tends to make the handling more like a rudder-like, more like a boat. So if you put a 65 mil, or like, for argument's sake, let's say you put an 80 mil or 100 mil wheel on the front, it tends to make the handling quite crap. <laughs> so I tend to have the, the, the big deep wheel at the back and then the narrow wheel at the front. It's been, you know, that's going to be one of those things that's up to the individual. Right, the bits, the tip bits, they're good. It is extremely well engineered. I think you will find it difficult to find a better wheel than this. And that's not just because it might be a Hambini special. It's just the bits that they've used. They, they, they can't contribute to a Hambini special. The build quality of the wheel is A+. Plus. No doubt about that. Um, again, you might say, oh, it's a Hambini special, but there's loads of people with them and no real problems. This is one of the few wheels that comes with a titanium free hub, and I think it is worth every penny because, I mean, I race on these things, and back when I was slower, um, I didn't notice it, but the free hub, especially on the back cogs, would tend to bite into the the alloy, Whereas with a titanium one, it, it doesn't. It doesn't even touch it. You know, you can put as much torque as you want through it. No problems at all. Uh, and it's, I think it's reasonably priced. Now, given that all the taxes are included, it's like £1,000, just over maybe £1,000, um, which I can, you know, appreciate. That's a lot of money. But this exceeds the um, build quality of wheels that are like double the price and the performance of it. I mean, the aero is really good as well. Um, uh, this is something I wanted to address. There are loads of fake reviews and loads of bots or fake user IDs on Instagram and Facebook and a lot on YouTube that are there to shred other people's reputations, myself included. To be honest, I don't really care. But if you're making a buying decision, then just bear that in mind. Um, on Patreon... These are, I think, the most popular wheels that they, they, that, are, that they have. And there was no one on there that gave any negative feedback. Um, if anything, when there was a query or a um, question, apparently Nine Velo were all over it. So take from that what you will. Now the bad. Now the marketing is not that polished. Now you, <laughs> some of the people I asked about this said, well, it probably is polished because maybe they're going along on a different route. They haven't spent anything on Instagram. They're just doing it because of almost engineering arrogance, um, which is, I guess, an interesting theory. But really, you know, it looks like they've spent the money on the engineering and you know, said marketing sod off. Right. Questions, comments. Right. Please comment below, like and subscribe. Remember to follow me on Instagram um, and on Facecloth. Our website is hambini.com. And remember to flash, slash me, flash me on Patreon. Right. That is the end of the show. If you did enjoy it, remember to smash that like button. If you didn't, go screw yourself. And as always, keep banging your hairdresser. <laughs>